today's topic is a collection and examination of the fecal samples in sheep and goats. So basically, uh, as we know, uh, sheep and goats are rare, rare for the economic importance and the lot of economy is depend on the sheep and goats. So economic importance is much more important for the farmers. Now, because of the weight loss due to the presence of parasites in the intestinal tract, the animals are not able to put on weight properly. Then there is a loss, uh, there, there are losses of the uh, sheep and goat due to the motility. There are losses in the farm uh, in the form of uh, decreased immunity. Whenever there are there are a large number of parasites in the intestinal tract that lead to the decrease in immunity, then forced deficiency due to the enteropathy. Uh, uh, for example, like a coccidia or tapeworms, they will lead to the enteropathy and the intestinal villi are not able to absorb the proper nutrition, and that's why the they lead to the forced deficiency of the different minerals and vitamins. Then subclinical infections uh, remains in the animals and these animals will uh, act as a source of infection to the others. Then quality of products. So if the animals are infected by the parasites, then the whatever the meat we are getting from that such animals will be having the uh, very poor nutritional value. So for all this purpose, we need to find out the different parasites present in the intestines of the sheep and goat. For that purpose, we have to carry out the fecal sample examinations. No, now we can see a uh, step by step uh, towards the fecal sample examination. We can see uh, each and every part of the fecal sample examination in detail. Before that, we should know some some of the terms which can be used in the fecal sample examination testing. So, yep, EC that a fecal egg count number of worms worm eggs present in the fecal matter that will be represented by the EPG. EPG means the egg per gram of the fecal sample. Then OPG. OPG means the oocytes present per gram of the fecal sample. Uh, these are the uh, quantity or the uh, number of protozoa, protozoal oocysts present in the fecal sample we can identify. Then ova is the egg of parasite. Larva is the immature stage of the parasite which come out, uh, of the, out from the eggs of the parasites. Qualitative fecal analysis means that just we have to see the different uh, worm eggs present in the fecal matter and quantity or the quantitative fecal analysis means exact number of eggs present in the that particular animal of the different types of the parasite. So these are the some of the terminology generally used in the fecal sample examination. Now indications. Indication is the most important part of the fecal sample examination where we want to go for the fecal sample examination. Generally, uh, many farmers are doing the routine health checkup. It is a part of preventive health management means at every two to two point uh, 2.5 months, the farmers are going to give some dewormers. So for that purpose, they are going to go for the fecal sample examination. Then the another indication is that whenever animals are showing the symptoms of weakness, then the uh, wasting and anemia. Then third one is the uh, skin infection, alopecia, rub skin coat, rub hair coat. Then whenever there is a diarrhea, whenever there is a melena, whenever there is a worms in a feces, then efficiency, uh, efficacy of the deworming agents, uh, then coprocultures, egg hatchability and infectivity test can be done with the fecal sample examination. And the last one, it is the academic purpose, the digestibility trials means whatever we are giving to the particular animals, is it get digested properly or not? So these are the indications of the fecal sample examination. Now we can see one by one routine health checkup. So every two to 2.5 months, uh, uh, we have to select some deworming agents to avoid wastage of deworming agent, to avoid mismatching of the deworming agents and the cost effective uh, elimination of the worms. So here what happened many times, the uh, farmers can give only uh, say for example, ivermectin. And after that, they are showing some, uh, the people, sorry, the sheep and goats are showing the symptoms of some uh, submandibular edema or like that. Then uh, if we go for fecal sample examination, then we may find there is a presence of fasciola or ampistomes. Then the, there could be the, wastage of the that uh, dewormer that has been given previously. So for that purpose, we should go for the fecal sample examination and find out the different types of worms present in the particular flock and then go for the specific type of uh, deworming agent. So here the picture themselves indicates something is there. So wasting weakness anemia. So if we see the body score of the, these animals, the, the definitely the body score of all these animals are not good. 
So in that case, we should go for the fecal sample examination. Then retarded growth, uh, growth pyloviriction, rough hair coat. So that is another indications for the fecal sample examination. If you see animals, the hairs are not uh, list, uh, glistening or the, they are very rough. The pyloviriction is there. In that case also, we should go for the fecal sample examination. Then poor growth, if the animal age is up to the mark, but the, the body weight is not good, then in that case, we should go for the fecal sample examination. Visible mucous membranes. Generally, animals are weak. In that case also, we should see for the mucous membranes of the animals and definitely we will able to see the paleness of mucous membranes. If you see over here, the conjunctiva is look very pale. Here also, you can see the pale mucous membrane. Again, the pale mucous membranes over here. Then another conditions generally uh, observed in the field conditions, the skin infection, poor coat, alopecia is there. There is a coccidial infection and tapeworm infection. In that case also, we should go for the fecal sample examination and we will able to uh, find out the different uh, coccidia, coccidial species and the tapeworm species also. The same thing, the poor growth, uh, alopecia, patchy hair loss, the highly suspected for the coccidia and the tapeworm infection. Then skin infection, poor hair growth, then the uh, again they suspected for the coccidia. In that case also, we should go for the fecal sample examination. Then another case or usually observed very commonly, that is a diarrhea, different types of diarrhea. So this is one diarrhea, this is second diarrhea, we can say the complete loose, loose motion, loose diarrhea. Here also, the watery type of diarrhea is there. Sometimes there is a blood in feces. Uh, so for example, say, say for example, severe acute coccidiosis, we will uh, we are able to see such type of fecal matter. So that we call as a dysentery or blood in a feces. Then melena, whenever there is a acute hemonchosis in the particular uh, sheep and goat, that lead to the uh, black discoloration of the fecal matter. Definitely diarrhea is there, but uh, along with that, the fecal color will be uh, dark uh, melena or the like a tar, tarry color, blackish color. Then another indications for the fecal sample examination is uh, we are getting the uh, pellets are good, but the, over the pellets, there is presence of some parasites like this. So tapeworm segments are coming out of the uh, pellets or the over the pellets. In that case also, we should go for the fecal sample examination. Then uh, sometimes we have to go for the fecal sample examination to find out the efficacy of the deworming agent. So in that case also, EPG is most important, most crucial factor. So we have to give deworming agents and after some particular time we have to recollect the fecal sample and find out the number of eggs present in the intestinal tract or the in the fecal matter. Coproculture is again, again there is some uh, academic interest topic. Coproculture means we have to collect the fecal samples and go for the, its culture. So it is an in vitro efficacy of the deworming agent, uh, hatchability of the egg, of the worms. The sometimes uh, some of the larval, larval stages are harmful. Uh, if we are saying that uh, X uh, dewormer can uh, can be effectively uh, work against the larval stages. In that case, also we should go for the coproculture uh, testing to see the efficacy of the drugs on this uh, harmful larvae in by the in vitro method. So we have to collect the samples and go for the culture. That will I will uh, discuss in later on in detail. Then uh, digestibility trials. Again, the uh, this is also uh, academic importance. Absorption of the specific nutrients, retention of the any specific nutrients and wastage or unabsorbed uh, or the undigested nutrients that can be diagnosed by the digestibility trial. So for these are the indications of the fecal sample examination. Up till now we have discussed about the uh, indications of the fecal sample examination or the collection of the samples. Now we'll shift ourselves towards the collection of the collection, dispatch and preservation of the fecal sample. So uh, the collection of fecal matter for the routine parasitologic, uh, parasitological examination. So whatever the fecal samples we have to collect, uh, how to collect for the this fecal matter uh, for the routine parasitological examination. So here we should go, ideally we should go for the uh, collection of the fecal sample freshly. We have to collect the fresh samples and go for the processing. Now, how to collect the samples? Very simple, just we have to insert the uh, two fingers, index fingers and middle fingers 
into the rectum of the particular animal and collect the whatever the pellets, the three, four, five, six, ten pellets we have to collect from the rectum. That is the ideal thing. Uh, but if if the flock is much more bigger in then uh, or the whenever there is a uh, less manpower in that case, uh, there are some problems by uh, for the collection of the material directly from the rectum. If not able to collect directly from the rectum, then what we have to do? We have to collect the freshly dropped fecal sample, fecal pellets, and collect immediately in wide mouth container and process them immediately. Then if not able to process the samples immediately, what we have to do? Just we have to put 1 ml of the pure formalin per 10 gram of the fecal matter. So formalin can be used to stop or the, it will arrest the uh, development of the eggs. So there will not be hatching of the eggs in the fecal matter. So uh, with the help of formalin, all eggs will be preserved and that can be transported easily uh, without uh, losing the uh, integrity of the eggs. Then uh, after adding the formalin, we have to pack, seal the container very well. Otherwise, the formalin uh, may spill the surrounding area and, and that, uh, that will smell very bad. Then we have to put the label on the container uh, we should make uh, or the on the uh, label we should have the name of the owner, type of animals, age, age group of the formalized fecal sample for the parasitological exam examination. We have to mention over the label of that particular bottle. If want to collect the fecal pellets from the flock, so one flock and one group will be the one sample. If the same age group and 40 animals, 50 animals, then uh, at least we have to collect the samples from 5 to 10 animals and make as a pool sample, collect the all samples together and make a one sample from the one group. So uh, one flock, one age group, one samples. That concept can be adopted uh, instead of going for the collection of the samples for 200 animals, 400 an animals, that will be more hectic. So in that case, we should uh, collect the representative sample from the one flock and uh, send for the laboratory. So like this, we can give some uh, numbers like uh, 8 plus 1. Let's depend upon that particular farm. We can give the numbers, nomenclature to the particular uh, plastic bags, plastic containers or whatever the containers, wide mouth containers we are using. We have to label them properly. Now the next is a fecal sample. Uh, examination collection of the fecal sample for the um, bacteriological examination and antibiotic sensitivity test. So generally, uh, this type of fecal samples are uh, liquid or semi-solid. So this is an indication uh, other we have to collect the samples in case of the diarrhea only. So for antibiotics, so if you are giving uh, many numbers of uh, many types of antibiotics, still the animals are not responding uh, in spite of giving the proper deworming or uh, other agents and till animals are showing the diarrhea, then in that case, we should go for the antibiotic sensitivity test. So in that case, the, in the maximum cases, there is a uh, liquid or semi-solid type of fecal matter. It should be collected in a sterile container as we are going to go for the bacteriological examination. So we have to give, uh, we have to collect in the sterile container. Many times ster sterile cotton swab can be also used we have to directly insert that uh, sterile cotton swab into the rectum of the particular animal and then uh, transfer that swab into the sterile container. Uh, here, we, do, uh, we should not take fecal samples which has been fallen on the ground uh, because there are the chances of the contamination of uh, contamination of the other bacteria are more or the saprophytic bacteria are more. So for that purpose, we should collect the samples directly from the uh, rectum of the animals. Now, the uh, swab with the fecal matter uh, or the semi-solid liquid, uh, semi-solid or liquid fecal matter should be carried on ice. No any preservative to be added. It's like that uh, in the previous uh, collection method, we have added the formalin. But for the bacteriological examination, we should not add any preservative in this. We have to carry the fecal sample on the ice only. Again, the same thing. Uh, we have to label the bottle, put the label bottle, uh, put the label and that bottle should be place in a plastic bag carefully to avoid direct contact of the uh, bottle with the ice because the some of the uh, ice or the water uh, may not be good and that uh, uh, after during the transportation ice will be converted into the water and that water may contaminate the fecal matter. So for that purpose, uh, we should have the double seal or the double plastic bag. Uh, in one black bag, we should put the 
a container uh, put one bag and that bag also put in a second bag so that there will not be direct contact of the uh, ice and ice water then uh, many times uh, there is a uh, damage to the label so that also be, that can that can be also avoided uh, with the help of plastic bag so uh, due to the ice many times the markings and the labels get spoiled damaged and the, sometimes the laboratory persons may not able to identify uh, which number is there which species is there or the for what purpose uh, you have sent the samples so for that purpose avoid the direct contact of the water or ice to the directly to the label as well as to the bottle coproculture uh, how to collect the samples? It should be fresh. Fresh samples should be collect collected uh, directly from the rectum and immediately uh, added to the physiological saline uh, PBS or normal saline. Label it properly and mention the fecal sample examination for the coproculture. Uh, for dig uh, digestibility trials, uh, for the 24 hours, we have to collect for the all 24 hours. Means if we start the trial, uh, then the whole 24 hour fecal matter should be collected animal should be kept in a closed premises a small cabinet should be made and the animal should be or the sheep and goat may be kept in the, that premises area of the floor of uh, cabinet should be covered with the polythene paper we have to uh, put the poly polythene paper over the floor then collect all fallen pellets for the 24 hours whole 24 hours no preservative should be added in this uh, pack the polythene bag, uh, bags, seal it and send to the laboratory immediately. Uh, proper label should be there and then mention the uh, everything on the that label and we have to mention pickle pellets for the digestibility trial. So like that, uh, we have to collect the uh, pickle sample for the digestibility trial. So up to this, this is the uh, collection of material for the, or the collection of pickle sample for the different types of the indications. Now we should go towards the processing of the pickle sample examination. That is a today's topic or the today's interest and that is most important. Uh, there are two different methods of the collection of uh, processing of the pickle fecal sample examination. Uh, parasitological examination uh, is a main motto of the today's lecture. So two methods are there. One is direct, another is indirect. Direct method, it is uh, most applicable at the field conditions. Indirect method, it is little bit academic purpose uh, or academic type of uh, method and it required them much more uh, some uh, different, what we say the glassware and everything is required for this. So two methods, direct method, indirect method. Indirect method, again, there are two uh, types of methods are there. Floating method, in that case, uh, in that case a saturated sugar solution or the saturated salt solution can be used and this is the most commonly used method for the EPG eggs per gram. Then the sedimentation method, uh, again this sedimentation method is used for the EPG also. Uh, direct method of the fecal sample examination uh, uh, or the processing, uh, we have to take few pellets of the fecal sample, we have to triturate them with the glass rod or the stainless steel rod in a plastic container or the plastic uh, bowl we can say. Uh, we have to add a small quantity of water, mix it properly, take one or two drop, drops of the mixed pickle matter on the slide, put the cover slip, observe under the microscope and the important thing is that while observing any type of liquid material, means maybe urine, maybe the pickle matter, these are the or the semen, semen, uh, urine and uh, liquid pickle matter, the condenser should be at a uh, downward side, so downward side, so condenser of the micro microscope should be towards the downward side. Otherwise, we are not able to identify different oocysts, uh, may not be able to identify the sperms or the may not be identify the different cells present in the urine. So the condenser should be towards the downward sides. So this is the these are the pellets we have to take in the small plastic container or the uh, bowl. We have to mix it here. A uh, little small video is there. We can see the we have to mix the pickle matter. Then after mixing, we have to take a few drops of the pickle matter on the slide. After that, we have to put cover slip over it. We have to put the cover slip and 
then go for the observation. So now while observing the fecal sample examination, not like a blood smear examination. Here we have to go straight from one end to another end, one end to another end. So uh, once you reach over here, then go to the little bit downward, downward side, go to this slide, uh, side, this side, this side, this side, like zigzag, but through and through from the one place to another place in a straight manner, no zigzag, no like that. But you have to go straight, 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 straight. And we have to see each and every corner of the slide, each and every corner of the slide to identify the different types of the parasitic eggs present in the this particular slide. Here also one small video of the same thing. So here many slides are there. So here you can see condenser. Condenser is at the lower stage, lower side. Then with the regular phone, we can able to reach up to the whatever the things are present under the microscope. So we can see some moments, some uh, parasites like that. So this is a simple thing uh, by using our own phone, we can do the, this thing. So here plate, uh, pickle samples are there. Then we have to, we have the condenser at the downward sides. Then observe first at the 10, at the 10x. We have to see fecal sample under 10x, means 10 into 10 is a 100x. Then if we want to visualize something, then go for the higher magnification at the 40 degree or the 40, 40 means 400x. So initially we have to see under 10x and uh, as per our requirement, we should go towards the 40x or the 400x. Now the advantage of the direct method are the, this is a quick method, uh, less lab wears are required, easiest way to identify the different types of the eggs and the field conditions with the minimum resources. Here we required one microscope, a few slides, one bowl and water, that's all. For the in, uh, immediate identification of the different types of eggs. Now disadvantage here, this is the only qualitative analysis of the eggs means uh, only the uh, qualitative analysis there, we are not able to identify quantity of the eggs present in the particular fecal sample by this method. Here, the fibers are there, feed particles are there, phytomaterials are there, they may interfere our microscopic observations, but uh, with the uh, regular practice, we can able to uh, overcome this problem also. But at the field condition, this is a very uh, good and cheapest method for the identification of different parasites. Now, indirect method, uh, in that case, we are going to quantify the different uh, eggs of the parasites. Indirect method, the first is the sedimentation method. Uh, what we have to do? We have to take the known quantity of the pickle sample. Uh, we have to triturate them. Ex generally, three gram of the pickle sample has to be taken. We have to triturate in the plastic container. We have to mix with the water and pour into the conical flask or the urine flask, we can say. And we can sew that uh, material with the either cotton pad or nylon sew or the uh, our regular tiwala sew. So we have to sew that material, make the final volume of the conical flask or urine, urine flask and allow that flask to settle for the 30 minutes. After, after 30 minutes, we have to decant all supernatant in a one stroke. Uh, in a one stroke, we have to... Uh, decant all contain or the material of, uh, in that urine flask then few milliliters of the sediment remain in the bottom of the pl urine flask and then we have to take it for the uh, identification of different eggs as well as the for the epg okay like this the urine flask is present over here uh, this is a one small sieve and it has been sieved with the uh, mono layer of the cotton pad here pickle sample has been added here, the container or the urine flask has been made up to the final volume and we have to keep it, keep this for the 30 minutes as it is. After 30 minutes, we have to decant it. So this is the decantation. So one stroke decantation. You can see one stroke decantation. You can see once again. In one stroke, we have to throw all material. In that case, only a few drop of the uh, Fecal matter will be remain as it is, and this we have to take take uh, as a uh, material for the microscopic observation. Okay, here either you can take that drop directly on the slide. You can take that drop directly on the slide and observe under the microscope. 
then we have to put the cover slip like this now after that take the sediment on the slide put cover slip and observe under the microscope by lowering the condenser advantage of this uh, like the other contaminants feed particles then the fibers artifacts will not be interfere our observations disadvantage small size eggs sometimes get mixed oocytes of the having the small uh, weight may not be come under the sediment uh, so that is a, one of the constraint of this method uh, they may not able to settle within the 30 minutes so that may change our diagnosis more times required to complete the procedure as we see uh, for field conditions uh, this will require at least uh, two to three hours to complete the one procedure then more glassware are required to complete this procedure so these are the some of the disadvantage but ultimately if we want the exact number of the parasitic eggs we should follow this method for the identification of the different uh, eggs and the uh, uh, number of eggs of particular species so this is sediment sedimentation method we can see the clear content over here and the we are able to observe uh, very good in very good manner in the microscope and this is a direct method we can see some of the fibers they are uh, uh, phytofibers are there uh, then the feed particles are there and that make uh, interfere with our normal uh, examination the indirect method floating method so here again the same thing we have to do but instead of uh, using the water here we have to use the uh, saturated salt solution or the saturated sugar solution uh, the same man in the same manner we have to take the 3 gram of the pickle sample we have to triture it in the glass or plastic container mix with the water pour this in the conical flask uh, uh, by the sieving through the cotton then transfer this material strain mat material into the measuring cylinder jar without sp spout uh, fill the uh, this material with the uh, saturated salt sol uh, salt or sugar solution uh, then uh, we have to wait for the 30 minutes uh, then after 30 minutes we have to collect the samples uh, if you are uh, just we have to uh, identify the number of uh, identify the uh, types of different parasites then just take a, a small cover slip uh, just touch to the top of the this container and just uh, observe under the microscope uh, just put the cover slip then uh, a, a drop or two drops will be uh, attached to the cover slip then we have to put that cover slip on the slide and uh, go for the observation like this so this is a container fully filled with the saturated solution here we have to do just put a uh, take a cover slip and just touch to the edges of this container and this cover slip should be put on the this slide and observe immediately like this now the next method for the quantification of this so macmaster microscope slide for epg so here two chambers are there in that macmaster slide we have to process the samples by the either uh, by the sedimentation method or the floating method we have to take that samples and pour that sample on the both the chambers the one one chamber another chamber we have to put put the samples over here with the pipette uh, fill these two chambers of the particular macmaster uh, uh, chamber and observe under the microscope now here what we have to we are getting after that the chamber one plus chamber two the whatever the number of eggs present in the one chamber and present in the chamber number two we have to multiply by 50 and after that whatever we are getting is a eggs per gram epg advantage the other contaminants feed particles the artifacts may not be interfere our diagnosis then the uh, disadvantage so uh, some heavy eggs may not get get diagnosed because they get settled into the deeper portion of the uh, that particular saturated solution more time required for the complete the procedures as usual uh, it is may not be that much of applicable at the field condition so this is about the second method of the indirect method of the epg now the next method 
to identify some of the conditions in the field conditions is the fecal smear preparation for the staining purpose. So here what you have to do, just uh, whenever the case of diarrhea is there, we have to make uh, take a small quantity of the that semi-solid fecal material on the slide, spread with the glass rod or the back side of the micro tip, allow it air dry and uh, go for the Lishman stain. It is a very simple method and we can identify so many things by this method. Uh, stain the slides with the Lisman stain, air dry, uh, uh, then the, do the Lisman stain, allow Lisman stain to be act on the slide for the one to two minutes, pour the distilled water or the buffer water on the uh, that uh, Lisman stain and allow to react for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we have to wash the slides uh, with the tap water and uh, dry it and observe under the microscope, maybe uh, 40x or the 100x. Like this, we can prepare slide and observe under the microscope. For gram stain also, we can uh, gram staining as, as well as the ZN stain. So in case of the some of the organized uh, sheep and goat farm, there are chances of the tuberculosis uh, are there. In that case also, sometimes we have to go for the uh, Jill Nelson stain for the uh, detection of the acid fast bacteria. So prepare the smear of the fecal matter, fix with the flame or the spirit uh, on the spirit lamp. Then allow to allow for the gram staining or the ZN staining, air dry and observe under the oil oil immersion. So advantage of this, we can identify the different types of infection. Maybe the gram positive bacteria, gram negative bacteria uh, helps to clinicians to choose proper antibiotics. If the we are getting the gram positive bacteria or gram negative bacteria, then clinicians can use antibiotic accordingly. Uh, they help to formulate the preventive strategy. If the say for example uh, the pickle slide is positive for ZN stain or the positive for tuberculosis, then uh, the clinicians uh, has to find out some ways to control the tuberculosis or the control the spread of tuberculosis uh, by culling the animal. So these are the things can be uh, decided by the clinicians by doing this simple staining uh, at the field level. Processing of the pickle matter for the coproculture. So, uh, the next thing is the coproculture and here what we have to do, we have to take the 10 gram of the, 10 gram of the pickle sample, triturate it with the, and transport in a glass or a plastic petri dish, pour sufficient quantity of normal saline and keep one fourth portion of the dish vacant or free. We have to keep the uh, portion free. Here we are, we are not going to add any pickle matter. Then this free space is, has to be given for the uh, hatched larvae. So whatever the larvae are there, they get hatched and they get migrated into the uh, empty space. So that space is uh, kept for that uh, larva, uh, larval migrat uh, migrations. Uh, need to take, need to keep this plate uh, for seven days at room temperature at uh, generally 25 to 28 degrees centigrade. And periodically we have to apply or the pour the normal saline. To, uh, we have, we don't have to make it dry. Don't uh, uh, means to keep it continuously wet, we have to uh, pour some normal saline continuously or on a daily basis. So like this. So here we can see this portion is has been kept empty for the larval moments. So after that, we have to collect a few drops of the this buffalo culture after uh, seven days. Then just we have to put the slides and we are able to identify different types of the uh, eggs as well as the uh, sorry larvae so that was the processing of the coproculture then processing of the fecal matter for the microbiological examination so as we discussed earlier the many times diarrhea whenever diarrhea is there and if we want the specific solutions in that case we should go for the antibiotic sensitivity uh, test uh, based on this issue uh, direct smear uh, streaking of the fecal material uh, so with the spreader of the ster sterile cotton we have to uh, make a mono layer of the fecal matter on the uh, agar plate, incubate at 37 degrees centigrade for 24 hours and observe for the zone of inhibition. Because here uh, many times farmers don't want uh, the uh, exact which bacteria is there, they want a solution. So the antibiotic sensitivity is one of the best remedy to give the uh, proper solution to the farmers. So like this, we have to ma make a smear uh, or the mono layer of the fecal matter on the petri dish uh, having the agar, then put the 
desired antibiotic dish over there. So here you can see the many antibiotic dish which are generally used in the veterinary field. They are used over here. Then after that incubation, we can see we are we are able to see a different zone of inhibition. So like neomycin is there. The uh, here PIT is there. So based on the the higher zone of inhibition or the clear zone, we can prescribe that much of the or the, that kind of antibiotics to the particular uh, animals or the flock. So like this also, the CFS is there, CP is there. The CFS means the superparazone cell bacterium like that. Uh, we are able to prescribe that particular medicines to the particular flock and we can control the uh, uh, problem of diarrhea. Now the next is the processing of the fecal matter for the digestibility trials. Here also uh, we have to collect the fecal sample, take known quantity of the pellets by weighing, uh, put it in, uh, in over for moisture percentage. Then the remaining fecal matter can be used for the estimation of protein, ash, fibers, acid, uh, acid insoluble, ash, fat percentage, mineral estimations, energy, etc. This is a completely, uh, completely academic purpose uh, method for the fecal sample examination, uh, not having much significance at the field conditions. Now, the next part is the uh, whatever we have did up to this. So, uh, till now is the first we have uh, identified the where we want to collect the samples means the indication. We have seen the indications. After that, we have collected the samples. After that, we have uh, preserved the samples and transported the samples. Then after that, we have processed the samples and after processing of the samples, uh, observing the samples, the actual interpretation of the fecal sample is come over here. So what we have to interpret after, after the uh, collection, uh, then the transportation and the ultimately observations of the fecal sample examination. So ultimately, the interpretation is the most important factor of the fecal sample examination. So identification of different uh, eggs and oocytes. Uh, identification of types of infection in case of the diarrhea cases, detection of the non-infective entities in fecal matter. Uh, is given dewormer has a good efficacy or good results. Uh, which solutions, medications needed to overcome the problems uh, identified during the fecal sample examination. So this could be come under the interpretation of the fecal sample examination. We can see uh, one by one. So here we can see the different types of the nematodes. They are present like strongyles, hemunculus, esophagostomum, bunostoma, strongyles, or trichostongyles, trichuris. So different types of eggs are there. Uh, so by practice, we are able to identify different types of the eggs. Now, uh, the important factor is the uh, roundworms. They are very, very common in the sheep and goats. So strongyles are there and hemunculus are there. Again, the roundworms like the esophagostomum and the Trichuris. Trichuris are the bipolar. They are having the two poles over here. So based on this bipolar activity or the bipolar appearance, we are able to identify this is the trichuris eggs. Then monegia tapeworms are also more commonly observed entities in the fecal sample of the sheep and goat. So there is a variations, a uh, little bit like a triangular type of patterns are there. So we are able to identify the monegia eggs. Again, these are the uh, monegia eggs. Flukes are there, ampistomes. Then fasciola. So here fasciola can be identified the presence of the operculum. There is the presence of operculum in case of the eggs of the fasciola species. So this operculum indicates there is a presence of the fasciola eggs in the particular fecal matter. Here also we can see the operculum is present over here. Coccidial oocytes. So here we can see the numbers, large number of the oocysts, one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. The coccidial oocysts, they are also present in the fecal sample examination. That is our interpretation. Means many times there is a combination of the uh, roundworm, tapeworm, as well as the coccidia together. So here uh, there is no clear cut demarcation that animal may have only the coccidia, animal may have only the tapeworm, animals may have only the roundworms. All three or four, all, uh, all four or five types of uh, parasites and Protozoa can be seen together in a one animal also. Again, the coccidial oocyst. Now, uh, after the uh, examination of the direct method or indirect method, uh, the next thing is the uh, we have to go for the some stain slides. What we have to do or the just as we discussed earlier, uh, take a pickles matter, spray it on the slide 
and stain with the Lisman stain. So in the Lisman stains, if we are getting the lymphocytes in more, more number, then this could be suspected for the viral infections. Then if the fecal sample smear is having the more neutrophils, then it is suspected for the bacterial infections. If the eosinophils are there, again, they, it could be the allergy or parasitic infestation. Then if the monocytes are there, then this could be indication of the long-standing illness like the Jones disease and the tuberculosis. Uh, then the gram staining, uh, maybe the gram positive bacteria or gram negative bacteria. Uh, so based on the gram positive bacteria, gram negative bacteria, clinicians can identify uh, the, or he can choose the specific type of antibiotics to treat the diarrhea. Then ZN, ZN positive bacteria, tuberculosis. So directly we have to go for the culling of the particular flock or the animals. So these are the importance of the stain fecal sample examination. So here, the stain fecal samples will may have the RBCs, may have the lymphocytes. Here, if you see, the lymphocytes are there and other things are the fecal debris are there. Here, the cluster of the gram positive bacteria is present over here. Here also, here also you can see the cluster of gram positive bacteria that can be identified in the direct fecal uh, smear examination. Here we can see the large number of the gram negative bacteria. The pink bacilli are there, uh, could be the salmonella or could be the E. coli. If the large number of uh, gram negative bacteria are there, then we can choose the uh, specific antibiotic which can uh, act on the gram negative bacteria. So, based on that, we should able to uh, identify uh, or the, we can choose the different antibiotics for the this type of infections. Now, after that, efficacy of dewormer. So, EPG, so we have to calculate EPG before giving treatment and after giving treatment. So, after 21 days, we have to uh, again go for the fecal sample examination and whatever agent we have given uh, to the particular animals, has it has been uh, work very well or not, that has been identified by this method and they, that is nothing but the eggs per gram, EPG. Interpretation of EPG, uh, overall count of the eggs overall count of the eggs per gram of the fecal sample, uh, 0 to 200. Good score. We, we may say this is healthy, but uh, logically, uh, little bit damage is there in the intestinal tract. If the EPG is 200 to 500, mild production losses are there, need to repeat the deworming minimum within the four, fourth week of the uh, first dose. Then if the count, count is uh, 500 to 1000, then moderate production loss and repeat the deworming after the same uh, four week. If the EPG is uh, uh, 1000 to 1500, uh, severe production losses and uh, are there. And we have to, again, the same thing, we have to repeat the deworming, uh, deworming uh, agent. Uh, if the EPG is more than 1500, extreme losses are there, uh, difficult to bring at the normal uh, level, uh, the production may not be come to the normal level, mortality may be possible due to the secondary complications also. So in that case also, we should treat the parasites first and go for the uh, control of the secondary complications. Now, the, some other rules or exceptions are there for the EPG. So if found a single fasciola, a single egg of the fasciola, in case of the fecal sample exam examination, uh, if we found the single egg of fasciola, Immediately, we should go for the treatment. If we found the uh, single uh, eggs of the trichuris, we should go for the treatment immediately. Now, in case of coccidia, subclinical coccidia, many times uh, 20 to 50 OPG, uh, OPG are there. Then the unapparent effect are there. Animals may look healthy, uh, eating good, uh, no little bit wasting is there. But if the count is more than uh, uh, 50 to 100, then subclinical case could be there, need to treat immediately. Uh, if the count is 100 to uh, 150, then body score, body conditions will be uh, poor body condition, need to treat immediately. And above 150 OPG, uh, uh, ultimately, these animals will have the poor body coat, blood in feces, diarrhea is there, mortality may be there uh, due to the secondary complications and we have to go for the immediate treatment of the Coxidia in, in case of uh, whenever we have the more OPG per hundred uh, per gram of the fecal sample, uh, more than 150 and above. Coproculture, larvicidal activity, again, this is a uh, academic int uh, interest type of uh, things. 
here we can see uh, in the beginning of the coproculture we are able to see we are able to see the uh, moments of the larva within the uh, eggs of the parasites so this larva get hatch and get uh, suspended or get move into the uh, that particular petri dish and we, we can able to identify this is a which type of larva and is it infective or not so this is a copper culture uh, can see the moment of the parasite within the egg of particular parasite so this is larva at one end of the eggs there will be the uh, bursting of this eggs and larva will come out So this this video has been captured with the uh, our regular mobile phone, not by uh, specific type of instrument or nothing. So this is just a slide. Uh, a, a fluid has been taken from the petri dish and put on the slides and put cover slip on the day first of the coproculture. So on day first coproculture, we are getting egg, eggs are present and the larva start uh, moving within the eggs. So this is the things can be observed in the day first of the coproculture. Now, at the seventh day of the coproculture, we are able to see fully grown larva in the pickle matter like this. If we want to check the efficacy of some enthalmatic agents, what we have to do just we have to put the uh, exact concentration of the particular enthalmatic agent into the that particular uh, solution or the plate then collect the uh, this larva and observe for their moments if the moments get sluggish or larva get dead then we can say uh, this there is a efficacy of the particular uh, dewormer over the the L L3 stage larva, L2 stage larva, or L4 stage larva. So based on that, uh, we can able to say that the particular agent is able to act on the uh, different larval stages. So that is the uh, beauty of the coproculture, we can say. Now, after looking towards the different uh, infective agents, uh, we should see other agents also and that is most important. So many times that, uh, that has been skipped by the many clinicians or the uh, laboratory persons. So the important thing is that we should see the crystals present in the fecal matter. So crystals uh, plays major role. So crystals may be they are sharp, may be amorphous, may be round, may be laminated, may be rectangular or may be irregularly sharp. So the, the, uh, these are the different types of crystals may be present in the present in the fecal matter. So like this, we can see the uh, round crystals and the amorphous crystals like this. Sometimes sharp and uh, irregular, sharp and irre uh, irregular. They are having the, some sharp uh, edges at the uh, their surrounding. Again, here we can see the sharp, uh, sharp bullet type also, like this bullet type of crystals are also present and there is a mixture. So we are in the same animal, we may able to see the sharp, maybe uh, able to see the round, maybe uh, able to see the bullet type of uh, crystals. Again, the same type of crystals were present over here. Again, here sharp crystals are there with round and sharp together. Now, interpretation of crystals. So, that is the most important factor of the interpretation of the crystals. Excessive oxalate crystals may be present in the field uh, or the excessive oxalate present in the field. Uh, high TDS of the water. If the water TDS is much more, then there is a condensation of the crystals and they form a, uh, a variety of crystals in the intestinal tract. Effect, the, uh, effect of the heavy crystals in the pieces. What happens if the crystals are in a large number in the fecal matter or the uh, that particular animal? There is a chances of the recurrent colic. The animal will, will have the problem of recurrent colic. Sometimes there is an intestinal obstruction, uh, local dilatation of the loop of intestines. 
due to the more weight in the lumen of the intestines that we call as the inertia due to the these uh, crystals the crystals get settled at the bottom of the uh, floor of the intestines and that lead to the decrease in the motility of the intestines and collectively we can call as a inertia of intestines and the that particular lobe of intestines get dilated and there is a there are the chances of the obstruction of the intestines and animal may die because of the uh, rupture of the intestines in some cases whenever there is a huge uh, or the high tedious water uh, and the excess of the oxalate in the feed condition uh, in the feed now after that some artifacts are there artifacts maybe the glass uh, grass fibers plant fibers pollen grains phytomaterials so like this so these are the not parasites so uh, we one should not be confused with this this is not parasite these are the just uh, fibers but if the uh, fibers are more uh, more in concentration they may lead to the diarrhea in the some of the cases then phytomaterial will be look like this then pollen grains if the large number of pollen grains are there sometimes there are chances of the diarrhea because of the uh, some allergic type of reaction now uh, we come to the conclusion uh, at the last slide of the our uh, today's uh, lecture the fecal sample examination summary so field at the field condition field uh, field conditions the direct method of the fecal sample examination is most uh, must and most important factor to identify the different type of parasites present in the intestinal tract tract of the sheep and goat we should follow the proper method of the collection of fecal sample we should follow the proper method of the transportation uh, of the fecal matter we should follow the proper uh, method of the transportation medium for the transportation then no option to the microscopic examination for the parasitic examination so those people are uh, running uh, away from the microscope uh, to find out the different uh, parasites present in the fecal matter there is no option of the microscope we have to observe the microscope without microscope we are not able to identify the parasitic eggs then uh, after that what will be there the, it will strengthen your diagnostic approach by using fecal sample examination whatever the identification of the different uh, material present either maybe the parasitic eggs maybe the coccidia maybe the segment of the parasites maybe the uh, crystals maybe the gram positive gram negative bacteria jn uh, jn bacteria uh, so all these will strengthen our strength to diagnose the different cases in case, in case of the sheep and goats uh, and this all things will be uh, able to choose the exact uh, remedies uh, remedies for the identification uh, after uh, identification of the uh, specific bacteria specific uh, parasites we are able to choose the exact uh, solution and eliminate the parasites uh, from the sheep and goat and accordingly we can plan the uh, preventive management to stop the spread of infection say for example tuberculosis coccidiosis so we should stop the uh, spread of coccidia spread of tuberculosis uh, after examination of the fecal sample examination so these are the things uh, has been given from my side uh, if you are uh, having any questions i am happy to give uh, answers to your questions he here is my number uh, only whatsapp uh, i am not able to speak on the po regular phone so whatever questions are there you may ask on this number 8600891946 thank you thank you very much